welcome all of you here. I'd also like to welcome my elected colleague, uh, Member of Parliament, uh, Louis Tamalkowski, who is the Member of Parliament for the neighboring riding. But the main reason we're here is that I am really pleased that our new leader, Stéphane Dion, so soon after Parliament ended, has chosen to come here uh, to speak to the Chinese community and to the Chinese uh, media. He's naturally very busy, but in just a matter of a few days he has uh, chosen uh, to be here, and I'm delighted uh, for that, and I will now uh, turn it over to uh, Stéphane Dion, uh, leader of the Liberal Party. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you to my two colleagues. Thank you to all of you, distinguished guests. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure for me to be here and to show how much it is important for the Liberal Party uh, to have a successful Chinese community in Canada, uh, how much it is important for us to strengthen our links with your countries of origin, uh, and how much you will be a great asset for, for Canada to do that. Uh, you know, I'm very ambitious for Canada. Uh, we need to improve our quality of life, which is already one of the best in the world. In order to do so, we cannot miss the new industrial revolution that is existing, the one by which we may make more money and become richer. And this new industrial revolution is the sustainable economy. That means to produce more, but with less waste and more recycling. To produce more with less non-renewable resources and more renewable resources. To have the best uh, technologies, to use the best industrial processes, that means to have then the best universities, the best talents, the best skills in Canada. And, I, and then to succeed, we need to build from the diversity of our country. The fact that we are a multicultural country, a country where the skills and talents that is coming from every, are coming from every part of the world, and especially from China. This is an asset for Canada. We need to build a Canadian team in order to put ourselves on the podium of the new economy, the sustainable economy, and then to offer a better quality of life for all Canadians and our, the next generations, and also to be a good citizen of the world, to be able to help in order to provide to human beings around the world what my name in Cantonese means, Dion, if I'm not wrong. It's a peace, a calmness, and, and serenity, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much. Actually, we want to take this opportunity to unveil the official Chinese name of Mr. Liang. So, Mr. Liang, will you please go beside of the and unveil your Chinese official name to the public? We have received a lot of. I guess that the spelling is good. <laughs> So the surname B, we really have the surname in China. Great company. I was, I was very proud when Prime Minister Chrétien delivered a speech about human rights in the University in Beijing. A very good speech. He was able to address the issue without antagonizing the relationship of Canada with China. To the contrary, to increase our capacity to be there and, and to have uh, exchanges uh, from the, for our economy, uh, trade, but also cultural exchanges, uh, university exchanges. Uh, this is very, very important. It's the best way to uh, improve the situation about human rights in China. We may speak for ourselves and say uh, we respect this and that, and prevent ourselves to make any change in China because we are not as there as we should be. I think the way Mr. Harper, uh, Prime Minister Harper is behaving is amateur. It's, uh, it's not uh, a lot of, uh, uh, it's not helpful. It is not providing any positive results, neither for Canada, neither for China. It's not what I would do. Yes, I would address the issue of human rights, but at the same time, I will do it in a way for Canada to be more on the ground in China instead of less. 
I cannot comment about what Prime Minister Blair said. I did not hear it. I will speak for, for the Liberal Party of Canada. We are the party of the Charter of Rights. We are the party of multiculturalism. As a policy for Canada, the first country who, who had a, which had a, 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 a policy for multiculturalism in the world. Uh, we are the party of official bilingualism. We are the party that helped the groups to be together. We are the party of uh, personal rights. And we will continue to do so uh, because it's a matter of social justice, but also of success for Canada. This country must be a multicultural country because yet there is no other choice. And this multicultural country cannot be an addition of, an addition of closed ethos. It must be the way to learn from each other to build something stronger because we are together. And it's what we will build, especially with the Liberal Party of Canada and with the Chinese community of Canada. It's true that among the eight candidates at the last convention, six of them were from, from Toronto. But uh, uh, they, they are good, and I will use their talents and skills. Uh, but also, I will work very closely with Paul Goudet, with Ujal Desange, with Raymond Chan. Uh, there are very strong people in our caucus. I start to name them. I shouldn't name all of them now. Uh, in our caucus that I want to work with. Um, as you know, uh, Senator Vivian, Vivian Coyle is very, very good too. In the Senate, you have people of different skills and talents that they offer to the, to the team. And uh, you will see that we'll have a very strong liberal team at the next election in order to convey Canadians to have a very strong Team Canada after the election with the majority Liberal government. As you know, in 2010, 100% of the uh, men, uh, manpower growth in Canada uh, will come from immigration. And a lot will come from Asia. Uh, at, that, at that moment, I want that to be solved. I want the problem of the credentials to be solved. I want all the barriers down, barriers that are stopping people in Canada, the newcomers, to give all their skills and talents to the nation. Uh, it's a matter of social justice for everyone, but also it's a matter of success for Canada. Uh, we need to compete in the very tough world. Uh, the world is very competitive. As you know from China, every year you have 350,000 more engineers. Every year. Paid $14 per hour. Do you know one Canadian ready to, uh, one engineer Canadian ready to we pay $13 per hour, so we need to, to compete. And in order to compete, we need to use all the skills and talents we have. And I will work very closely with your community uh, to be sure that uh, every individual will give his or her full potential for Canada. We, we had uh, some delegates that were from Chinese origin. Uh, maybe, not, uh, maybe not enough, but... Uh, I think our party is very, very open to multiculturalism, and we will show it. We have shown it, and we will continue to show it through our policies. I will do my best to be sure that we have uh, like, candidates at the next election coming from every community. Yes, uh, I, I, John is confirming what I thought. At the last election, we committed ourselves to get rid of that, and Mr. Harper did only that halfway. So uh, I think our policy was much better than his. About the dual nationality, I hope it will not be an issue in Canada. It's, uh, it's an asset for the country. And it does not stop every of us who have dual citizenship to be fully loyal to Canada. But keep it. Yes. Question that. We are in the global world. And to think that in order to be Canadian, you need to close yourself to the world is a big mistake. We are not afraid, we Canadians, to be successful in the global world. Uh, we have the capacity to do it precisely because we are open to the world and we have a strong multicultural population with, with, if I may say so, two official languages that are international languages. And I'm so proud each time I, I visit a, a French version school to see young Canadians from Chinese origin speaking my language. <laughs> I think what the uh, liberal leader must be able to do is to win a debate in both official languages. Doesn't mean that you, you may be perfectly bilingual. I will work on my, on my accent, but I, it's, very likely that, it's very likely that I will keep a French accent. But, uh, but isn't it true that many Canadians 
more and more Canadians have English as their second language. Yeah. And, and so to have a prime minister who, who is the same situation may be a good way to connect together. Yeah. As you know, one difficulty we have in Canada is it's a provincial jurisdiction linked to the control that each profession want to keep. Uh, but there are things that the federal government may do. Uh, the first one is to have an inventory of the jobs available in Canada. More and more we have a shortage of workers instead of a shortage of jobs. And uh, this must be well advertised everywhere to help people to move where the jobs are. Uh, the, the, the second thing we need to do is to be exemplary ourselves, the federal government. Uh, we will have a lot of baby boomers who will go to retirement in the coming years, who have a golden opportunity to bring uh, in the civil service of Canada uh, the new face of the country, including all these young Chinese of Chinese origins who are speaking the two official languages, English and French, which is always an asset when you want to succeed in the civil service of Canada. So I encourage you to keep your capacity to, to learn to your kids the two official languages of the country. Uh, we need to develop the, the uh, mentorship also, which is a, a strategy that has been well used in, uh, in Toronto to help the newcomers to, to find their way to, to find the, the jobs where they, uh, the, their talents may be used. Uh, there are a lot of things we need to do and where the federal government may push the bank, the provinces, and the, uh, the profession bodies of the country. On the first question, it obviously will comment the budget when we will see it. Uh, the likelihood that we will be in love with the budget of a very, very right-wing government is not very high. Uh, but this being said, I would prefer to have an election too early. I don't think Canadians want it. But I cannot uh, suggest to my caucus to vote a budget that we think will hurt the Canadian people. An example of that is the kind of cuts they did about the, the tax cuts. Uh, the GST tax cut, did you see it? Did you benefit from it? The inflation took it anyway. And it, it which transform, transformative capacity it gave to the country. Uh, so what I would prefer to do is meaningful tax cut that have a transformative capacity that will help you to, um, uh, to have the good behaviors in order to decrease your energy, uh, uh, electricity bill in choosing the good appliances, the good retrof retrofit for your house, the good cars, and so on. It's time to have in this country an environmental tax reform that will give you as much tax cuts as Mr. Harper is claiming to give to you, but then you will see it, we'll discuss about it when you will purchase uh, uh, products, We'll uh, say, hey, you know that if you choose this uh, furnace, uh, you will save a lot of money over the years, and the government will give you a rebate to, to pay for it. You will do the right thing for the wallet, for your wallet, and the right thing for the planet. Certainly, that I will not proceed to the additional GST tax cut that Mr. Harper is proposing. I will come with something much more effective for the transformative capacity of our economy. I didn't see what the Prime Minister said. I hope he's not saying that any debate about the design of the mission is the way to work for the enemy. If he's proposing that, it's very extreme as a declaration. It's completely irresponsible. I will give you an example to explain how far it may go. Assume that we would have made the mistake to listen to Mr. Harper some years ago, and we would have sent our troops in Iraq. Would we say today we need to keep our troops in Iraq to support our troops? Would we prevent ourselves to question the mission in Iraq? Uh, obviously not. The United States and UK are doing that now. And before to go to this point in Afghanistan, we need to indeed to try to have the, the proper design of the mission. We need to, to be able to, to debate about what kind of mission we may develop in Afghanistan to help for the security of the people of Afghanistan. And we should not be always uh, threatened by a prime minister accused, accused to not support our troops. My party is 100% behind the troops. And it's why we need to have this healthy debate, this needed debate in Canada. And what kind of prime minister may say that after he blackmailed the house? Last spring, last spring, in saying to the House that if we don't vote his way, uh, he will put us in an election. He was using that for partisan purpose. He was dividing the nation. And the same man today is saying that 
if I'm questioning his way to work with our allies, to work with the government of Afghanistan, uh, I'm not supporting the troops. This is shameful from the Prime Minister. I hope he will have an honored attitude and he will welcome a healthy debate about how can we have a mission that makes sense for the good sake of the people of Afghanistan. We have a very diversified uh, uh, team of candidates from Ontario, including some Chinese, uh, candidates from Chinese origin as candidates, and I hope that we'll be able to, to find ones, and especially if they are female. So have you found a female? Female! I think um, it will never be a surprise for anyone that I'm very committed to be a proud Quebecer and a proud Canadian. And I will never uh, be willing to choose between these two identities. And I think to have uh, different identities is an asset. It's never... Uh, so identities is something that you add, not something that you subtract. And to me, to be Quebecer and Canadian is a gift that God gave to me. And I want to keep it for myself and for my children my child, in fact, and uh, for the next generations. It's, a, it, it's a, the way to send this good signal to the world. If you, um, if you say to the world, you know, we cannot stay together because we don't speak the same language and we don't have always the same cultural references, what a mistake. Uh, we need to show to the world that indeed, when you are together, you are able to build something greater because you are together. It's what the message that we can just must send to the world and it's why I'm so committed for the unit of my country. I think that through the 20th century, the Liberal Party of Canada has been the party that has been able to bring together economic progress and social justice. It's why Canadians gave their confidence to us so many often, even though once in a while they put us in the penalty box. Uh, but most of the time, I think Canadians understood that what we wanted to do was closer to their aspirations than the other parties. Uh, the NDP never understood really the market economy. And the Conservatives, most of the time, not always, don't want to be unfair, most of the time, saw social programs as a burden for the economy. We thought, and we were right, that it's possible to design social policies in a way that will help the economy to be more competitive, because people will be healthier, better educated, and so on. I want to do the same about the environment. If you bring the environment and the economy together, at a time where the world is looking for solutions to all that, because planet cannot follow us, we are in a big, big difficulty. And then if you find these solutions, you will sell it everywhere in the world, and you will make megatons of money with it, dollars. And it's what I want Canada to do. It will not be done with Mr. Harper, it will be done with me as a Prime Minister, and with the great three team who will build. I'm afraid though that if we don't change our way of life, one day you will have a right-wing government that will be a majority one that will do that saying we have no other choice. So what we need to change is an environment that is bringing cancer to one Canadian out of three now. It's not because of our healthcare system that we have one Canadian out of three who will have uh, cancer in his or her life. It's because of the environment in which we are. But then we need to change a government that is unable to tackle the chemicals. After a study of 23,000 substances that we really brought me the uh, perform over the years, this study well, is really now, it's time to act. And what Mr. Harper announced was almost nothing. He wants to list 300, 200 substances when the experts said it's between 400 and 600. And he wants to do that in six years when, when we are able to do it in three years. We have a government determined to do as less as possible in this file when I want to do as much as possible. I'm a good partner for all the provinces, including the province of Ontario. Uh, there are many ways by which uh, we will be more uh, helpful for the government of Ontario, especially if we are good in our own, uh, uh, our own jurisdiction. I want the federal government to focus on its own role, and in doing so will help the provinces. About the equalization uh, payments, uh, this is a constitutional requirement that said that every province in Canada must have uh, the same uh, uh, fiscal capacity that is uh, at the average. Like uh, the former President Reagan said, everybody must be above the average. Uh, it's the, the, uh, the aim of the equalization program. And uh, for that, I'm very really willing to work with Premier McGuinty and the other premiers to be sure that 
will not end up to a situation where some provinces will have a fiscal capacity stronger than the one of Ontario because of the money they receive from Ontario. So we need to have fairness, and I'm very committed for this fairness. Uh, if, look, if it was easy, I would not be there. <laughs> I would do something else, and I'm sure, I'm sure Louis and, and, and John as well. It's because it's tough that we like it. And our, our approach will be to not have three silos, the economy, social, environment, combine them. Uh, if you have a more uh, energy efficiency, if you have a, a, a commitment to come with the cleaner, cleaner, uh, clean air, clean water, uh, to protect your biodiversity, well, you have uh, top quality universities, then you have a great skilled population, you have a population with strong habits of conservation, and at the end of the day, your economy is stronger. Uh, if you look at the Scandinavian countries, uh, they have uh, their, the growth of their productivity is stronger than the one of Canada now. And one of the main reasons is because their economy are greener. And they are, when it's time for us to, to buy uh, the equipment for our forest, we buy the Scandinavian products uh, because uh, they come with stronger regulations. They have to protect their forest. They know more than us how to deal with it. I want Canada to stop to be a slow mover about the environment because if you are a slow mover about the environment, you're condemned to be a slow mover in the economy. Do you have anything to add to, to, to Canadian media? No, just to add that uh, Canada is very fortunate to have a strong uh, Chinese community and that these uh, gateway, Pacific gateway, that Mr. Uh, Harper is um, delayed, delaying, uh, it's an asset for Ontario, it's an asset for Quebec, it's an asset for the whole of Canada, and I will make sure that it will not be done in eight years, as Mr. Harper is proposing, but in five years, as Mr. Harper wa Mr. Martin wa was proposing, this is good for the whole of Canada, not only for British Columbia, not only for the Chinese community of Canada, for all of us, and it will be done. Uh, Dr. Kenny, can you uh, please say a few words to close the session? Thank you, Catherine. Well, Mr. Dion is quite after the reaction. Our leader has made uh, his intention to meet great Canadians across the Canada. Today, he came down specifically to meet our Chinese media friends here and in the heart of the GTA community right here. And he insists in traveling from downtown to here to meet all of us. And thank you very much for really reaching out to the community. And we look forward to many, many, many activities together when you become the Prime Minister of Canada. Thank you. Finally, I want to thank Catherine okay, Howe okay, for the okay, okay, excellent, okay. excellent call okay, okay, for okay, this please. event. And also Thomas Q and Emily Ng for coordinating this uh, event for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.